Vios, 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 Vios. And may isa pa dun sa malayo. They're everywhere and we also have one with us. Let's do a review. The Toyota Vios is the most popular car in the Philippines. Consistently the number one selling car in the market. We continue to wonder why. So let's try to find out. Also, a new generation Vios is arriving hopefully this year. So is this still a good choice? What we have is the Toyota Vios 1.3 XLE CVT variant and it's priced at 882,000 Philippine pesos. Now before we talk about everything, I just want to mention the Toyota Motor Philippines test unit is a bit older. If you get the Vios XLE now, it comes with sport ear two-tone alloy wheels, a newer infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as a different pattern on the fabric seats. Thankfully, everything else is the same which is what we get in this unit. And in front, we have the very recognizable smiley Vios design. It's not my favorite when it comes to looks but it's not bad at all, even taking cues from Lexus such as its large front grille. Being the XLE, we only get multi-reflector halogen headlights but I am surprised to find some LED fog lights here. The side is pretty basic Vios, we do get body color door handles and mirrors, an indicator on the fender, and like I mentioned, the wheels are newer now. Same size as these older ones though at 15 inches wrapped in 185-60 tires. And moving towards the rear, I honestly think this is where the Vios looks best. It's also simple, but yeah, it looks good. Halogen taillights are standard on this variant. And opening the trunk with the key, we do get a decent 326 liters of space. Enough for taking our luggage to the airport. No wonder it is popular for ride-sharing vehicles and taxis. Now we're inside the Toyota Vios XLE and the interior of the Vios is somewhere that we'll be very familiar with. If you're familiar with the exterior, much more with the interior because most likely you have been able to sit in one or at least no one who has a Vios of course. The design itself is very basic, it's very simple. It's what you'd expect from a vehicle at this price. So it's honestly kind of looking a bit old but at the same time it's still not too old so it's kind of in between the materials here are all hard touch plastic as we'd expect from this price so hard touch hard touch dashboard is all hard touch plastic we do have some fake stitching over there to make it look a bit better but yeah so we have that and here in the door panel same thing hard touch everything except the armrest which is a soft cloth material and also at least despite this being a lower variant it's actually the mid variant we still have this silver plastic which does brighten up or give a little bit of contrast in this cabin. Then moving here to the center we do have a very big steering wheel on this. It's quite big. It is always it's only wrapped in polyurethane which I also expected that but at least we do have some textures here to make it feel better. Then also we have some audio controls right here on the left which is thankfully there and then our horn. It's our typical Toyota horn. Then the steering wheel is also tilt only so unfortunately we don't get telescopic adjustment so it'll take a bit of time to get your optimal driving position but I did eventually find mine which is what we're currently in. Then here we also have our gauges right here, basic gauges, very simple, very nice to see honestly so it's actually quite refreshing to have a very simple set of gauges here. So we just have a small display in the bottom for our trip computer, we have our odometer over there, a clock, temperature, our current gear. We have our trip distance, A and B of course, our fuel economy, and our fuel range. So very basic as well over there, very refreshing really. It's also quite big so it's very easy to see everything, all the information over there. Then here in the center, again we have that old older infotainment system on this particular test drive unit. But in case you're looking for an older Vios, if you're looking for a used one, maybe this will work for you. So we have here a 6.75 inch touchscreen infotainment system. It's in the double DIN screen. And yeah, it's pretty basic as we'd expect. No Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on this one. But it does work pretty well. It's very responsive, surprisingly. I wasn't expecting to get a very responsive screen on this one. Also, we have some touch sensitive buttons on the left. So the home button works pretty well. The volume, it's okay as well. Although I'd still prefer a knob. And also, our one and only USB port can be found here on the screen so make sure you have longer fingernails like I do right now and you can pull the cover out which hides the USB port and auxiliary port the only ones in this vehicle and also this screen also has something that I think I haven't seen in quite a while so press tilt on the side and then display open and the screen pops open like this so I haven't seen one of these in a long time so it's very quite quirky it's very quirky 
to see that here then moving down we do have our manual climate controls as we'd expect as well all vss even the top of the line variant does come with this so we just have some knobs here very basic and but they do feel really good so at least there's that they feel of very good quality and then moving further down we have two cup holders our gated shifter over here with manual mode really nice to have and it also feels really nice by the way then here in the center console we only have a small storage area we could put our phone over there and our parking brake manual parking brake of course and our 12 volt power outlet right here then here in the center we do have a an armrest which does have a little bit of storage underneath it's very small but it will work and at least we do have that most vehicles in this segment don't come with that and although it is only hard touch plastic but yeah kind of expected that as well we also have more of that fake stitching on that then here in the seats like i mentioned earlier we do have a different pattern now but for this one we do still have a very nice pattern it's kind it's a mix of black and blue it's a nice fabric it doesn't feel the most expensive the most doesn't feel the nicest but it does feel pretty okay and the seat itself is very supportive surprisingly i'm not uh, i'm not complaining about how this seat feels so it has, does have decent upholstering on the side yeah and it's of course manually adjustable and now we're here at the back seat of the Vios and like I mentioned earlier it is highly likely that you already experience sitting back here be it a rent a car a grab or uber which I really miss anyway yeah so it's most likely that you have already sat in here at least experience sitting in the back of the Vios and then anyway space here is pretty good no wonder it's so popular for taxis ride sharing we have loads of space back here this under the seat is a bit tight for the feet but you can put your feet under there legroom pretty good headroom also pretty good so the basic shape of this vehicle does translate to more space here at the back although i do have to say that this center tunnel over or rather the center console from the front does get a bit in the way when you are trying to sit in the middle but at least once you do there the floor is flat so it's still very spacious so it doesn't really bother but it will bother you initially then the materials here are the same as in front so hard touch on the door panel everything hard touch but here we do have hard touch armrest as well so no longer covered in a fab a soft fabric padded fabric this one is now hard touch but yeah i kind of expect that as well for the back seat then we also of course don't have a center armrest and the seat itself is quite comfortable so yeah thigh support is pretty okay the material is the same as in front and the back support is also pretty okay and also we do have back pockets behind both front seats so usually we only get one in this segment or at least in this price point but this one gives us two one behind the driver one behind the passenger which is another unexpected thing i found here now we're driving the toyota vios xle and it's actually not my first time to drive a vios so despite having ridden several times as a passenger of course i've actually driven the vios but in manual i've only driven manual vios so far and this is my first time to drive an automatic Vios. And so far, it is a pleasant experience. So let's talk about the engine first. This is powered by, of course, a smaller engine option. So this gets a 1.3 liter four-cylinder gasoline engine that produces 99 horsepower and 123 newton meters of torque paired to a CVT. So all automatic Vioses are paired to a CVT. And from the moment I drove this, honestly, it's a bit slow. But at the same time, it's just right, especially if considering the fact that this is just a city car. And since this is just a city car, all the power delivery is pretty decent. Surprisingly, coming from a stop, it is quite responsive. So that actually surprised me. But it does lose steam pretty quickly. So again, at first, it, you'll feel that it is pretty quick when you step on the accelerator. But once you do get up to speed, you can feel that it is losing its power. It is getting a bit slow you can feel like it's dragging itself but again yeah you don't really expect that in this segment so so what people want in this segment is something that they can just drive on a daily basis nothing fun nothing special it's a normal car and that's what this offers to buyers of course Toyota tune this for city driving but I do think that the steering is a bit on the heavy side so I was actually surprised to to feel that when I first drove this so steering is on the heavier side I was really surprised with that and also despite it being heavy it is still a bit vague but again that one was also expected from this segment although I do wish that it was lighter instead of being vague and heavy but at least if it was lighter it's something that it's proper it's more balanced compared to having heavy and vague 
as for ride quality and NVH installation, we're actually in a very rough road right now and pretty much every car I drive here is actually quite rough but the Vios does do it pretty well. I was That's one thing about the Vios is that despite it being a bit slow, despite the steering not feeling that great, it is very comfortable when it comes to its ride quality and VH insulation. So the bumps are very well absorbed actually. And when it comes to NVH insulation, it's surprisingly a very quiet place to be in. It's, I mean, it's not the most quiet of course. It's only, this price less than 1 million. So we don't expect this to have excellent NVH insulation, but still, for what it is, it's pretty good, so it's pretty quiet. Of course, when you get up to higher speeds, it will get a bit louder. But for this case, for where we are now inside the city, just inside the city, it's already good. Also, I did mention earlier that it is a bit difficult to find the optimal driving position in this car, but once you do eventually find it, which I already did thankfully, it is pretty comfortable to drive. Of course, being a subcompact sedan, visibility is pretty good so the basic shape of the vehicle the basic design actually translate to better visibility in front and the sides everything is pretty good except the fact that we don't get a reverse camera but honestly parking without a reverse camera is already an acquired skill these days so it's better if more drivers get to learn to park without their reverse cameras parking sensors and something like that and overall like i mentioned the vs is not the most fun to drive it's not it's actually pretty boring in all, in all honesty but it provides us comfort it provides us a decent daily driver and in a vehicle like this the most important thing is fuel economy so that's where the Vios actually does pretty well because even if I'm just driving inside the city I was able to achieve a pretty good 11 kilometers per liter unfortunately I wasn't able to take this out on the highway so I won't be able to give you a number with that but still it's pretty good and that's what buyers really want in this segment. The Toyota Vios is undeniably a good choice. It's not the most equipped, it's not the best driving, and it's built just right. And that's what makes it so popular. It offers the basics that most people need without too much flair and offers an easy and low-key experience for those who want such. I won't even be surprised if lots of people race to get the last of this generation once the new one comes out. It really is a good choice.